Hello, so this is going to help you understand probability uh, in a simpler way. So probabil probability is basically, uh, in general, the chance of you making an event happen. So, um, for example, if I have a coin and, I want, and there are two sides, heads or tails, the chance of me getting heads is one over two because I can only get heads or tails. So I have a 50% chance of getting heads or I have a 50% chance of getting tails. Um, in the set type of scenario, in the set type of thing, we call the universal set the solution uh, sample space, which is basically the possible values that we can get in that in that uh, event. Because um, when we're talking about probability, we want to have a set amount of things that can happen. This circle A is the things that we want to happen. It can be anything we want. Like for example, the heads or tails thing, where A will be heads because we want to take heads. Uh, but in this case, uh, let's say we have a tr um, we have ten scenarios in our sample space, and our event A, our the thing that we want to get, um, only happens uh, only three of them fulfill that event. Only three of them cause the event to happen. The other seven do not cause the event to happen. So the probability of A happening is the number of A, uh, A scenarios over the total number of scenarios. Not just not just the outside, but also the numbers in A itself. So it's three over 3 plus 7, the whole thing. So it's 10. Um, in a, For example, in Chonto, one of the six letters are chosen. So um, we have C, O, N, T, and H. Um, I see in the, the textbook that they wrote O1 and O2. But um, when we're writing about the... Um, and when we're writing about sample space, we can write like that. But if we're writing about the possible outcomes... Um, we only have one outcome, which is O. Uh, uh, when we're writing the possible outcomes of getting a, a, vowel, uh, a vowel, we only have one letter to get, which is O. However, since that there are two O's, uh, since that there are two O's in, in this thing, we, ha uh, we have a two out of six chance of getting, o, of getting a vowel because there are two O's and there are six letters. So it's two over six, which is one over three. But the total amount of letters that we can get is, five, is still five. We still only we still only have five letters. We just have a higher chance of getting O than we have of getting the others. Now the probability is in percentage. So if you will convert it to decimal, the probability cannot be lower than zero percent, or it cannot be higher than one hundred percent. One hundred percent means it's definitely gonna happen, or we can call it a sure event. Well, when you're talking about a zero percent chance of happening, we call it impossible or uh, um, uh, not possible. The complement of an event A. A, uh, complement means the support, the, the other side. Like for example, um, if your A is getting heads, then your complement of A is getting tails. If your A is getting A for exams, then the complement of A is not getting A in exams. So the, uh, the probability of getting a, of getting a complement of A is one minus the probability of getting A in the first place. For example, um, if you, if you have, if you have a 25% chance or a one over four chance of, um, uh, getting a uh, five ringgit then uh the the chance of you getting not uh, of getting uh of not getting one ringgit would be one minus one over four which is three over four probability of combined events there are two types of combined events a or b and a and b so a or b means um you can have uh something that can fulfill a or you can have something that can fulfill b so, um, uh, for example, if uh, in these 10 numbers, I want to choose a number that is prime or even. So, um, so if I put it into a set, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I know that uh, prime numbers include 2, 3, 5, uh, and 7. Well, I also know that even numbers include 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So, since there are 8 possible values that I can get, then... Um, then the probability will be 8 over 10 or 4 over 5. Make sure that uh, you do not count... Um, because remember, uh, in this case, number 2 is, is prime and even. So you do not want to count it twice. You only want to count it once. That's why it's better for you to do a set form because it will let you not count it twice. Um, for A and B, you want to you wanna find the, uh, the, the scenario where if you pick a number, you will fulfill both scenarios. For example, in this scenario, I want to pick a number that is odd and prime. If I want to pick a number that is odd and prime, um, odd numbers include 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Uh, prime numbers include 
two, uh, two, three, five, and seven. So um, since three, five, and seven can be uh fulfill both events, then we only have a three out of ten chance of getting a, a an odd n prime number. Two events that cannot happen at the same time are mutually exclusive. So um. Remember what I said uh, that you have to be careful because some numbers can fulfill both things even though you only want to get one of them. If if none of that happens, like uh, for example, um, uh, uh, I want to get a number that is uh, 3 or 5. So 3 or 5 are not related. You cannot get 3 and 5 together if you only have one chance of getting it right. But if you want to... Uh, I messed this part up, so I cut it out. I hope it's easy to understand uh, after I cut it out. 9, 10, 12, uh, 23, and 30. So, um, I, want to uh, uh, I want to choose a number that does not have number 1 or number 2 in it. Then, um, so, uh, since I want to find a number that is uh, not number 1 or number 2, it, that does not have number 1 or number 2 in it, um, 10 has number 1, and 23 has number 2. But 12 has one more 1 and number 2. So it's not mutually exclusive because I have a number that can fulfill both. In mutually exclusive um, uh, events, they cannot happen. So the formula for that is the possibilities of A happening plus the possibilities of B happening. If there are three events that you want to do like A, B or C, A or B or C, then it's the possibility of A happening plus the possibility of B happening plus the probability of C happening. For dependent and independent events, independent is... Um, the easier one, where if you were to do a, a, a certain event, uh, if, you, if you were to do a certain thing multiple times to get a, 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 a type of event, they do not affect each other. For example, let's say you want to flip heads or tails again. This is the easiest one. Let's say you flip heads or tails. So um, you wanna tr uh, what is the possibility, probability of you getting two heads? So the probability of you getting two heads will be 1 over 2 times 1 over 2. Because um, after you get that 1 over 2 chance of getting heads, you have an, another half chance of getting heads again. So you have uh, 1 over 4 chance of getting heads uh, twice. Um, but for dependent events, dependent events are affected by the event before it. Like for example, if I have 10 apples and 15 oranges, then I have a 2 over 5 chance of picking an apple because there are 10 over 25 apples. However, if I pick an apple and then I pick another one, if I want it, uh, if and I want to pick another apple, I will have a three over eight chance of picking another apple. That is because um, there are nine apples left and there are twenty four fruits left in that thing because I already took one apple out. So the total number decreases by one and the number of apples also decreased by one. If I want to pick an apple and then an orange, I will have a two over five times five over eight, uh, which is one over four chance of doing so. Um, why will I have why will I have two over five times five over eight? Because um if I were to pick an apple first, because remember, and then that means I have to pick an apple first. So I will have a two over five chance of picking an apple. If I were to pick an orange, there are there are fifteen out of twenty-four oranges in that in the in the basket. So I will have a five over eight chance. So you might be uh actually wait, never mind. Um if I were to pick an apple and an orange, I would have a 2 over 5 times 5 over 8 plus 3 over 5 times 5 over 12 chance. Now, why, uh, why, is, why is it so? Because I can either pick an apple plus orange or an orange plus apple. So if I were to pick an apple and then an orange, I will have 2 over 5 times 5 over 8. If I were to pick an orange and then an apple, I will have a 3 over 5 times 5 over 12 chance. However, if this time, after I pick an apple, I, uh, if I were to pick an apple, and then I, after that, I replace the apple, I put the apple back in, then I will have a 2 over 5 times 3 over 5 chance because the apple is back in, so there is a 3 over 5 chance of getting an orange after that. Now, why do I use times? And why do I use plus? That is the main thing that people ask me. When do I use times and when do I use plus? You use times when the when the things are, um, when the events happen one after another. So, uh, for example, in the scenario, you want to pick an apple and then, and then an orange. So since the apple and orange have to happen, happen together, then you, have, uh, then you have to multiply it to get the chance of that happening. Like, for example, again, heads or tails. So if I want to have a coin and then I go heads or tails, so heads or tails, 
and then I, after that I, I after that I flip a coin again, then it will be heads or tails again. So there are four scenarios. Remember, I said that there is a one over four chance of getting heads twice because there's because there's only one way of getting heads twice, and there are four total outcomes here. So that's why you have to times. Uh, but how about the plus sign? So let's say you have multiple scenario. Uh, you use the plus sign when you have multiple scenarios where it can fulfill the event uh, that can fulfill the event. For example, in this case, you want to pick an apple and an orange. So there are two ways for it to happen. You pick an apple and an orange, or you pick an orange and then an apple. How about if I have apple, orange, and pear? So um uh if I want to pick an apple, an orange, and then a pear. Um then there are then, then there are a few ways for me to, uh for me to get it. Um, either again, apple first, and then an orange, and then a pear. So there'll be a A, O, P. Or I get a pear, and then an apple, or, and then an orange. And then I get a, an apple, and then a pear, and an orange. And then I get a, um, a pear, an orange, and then an apple. And then I get an orange, an apple, and a pear. Or I get an orange, a pear, and an apple. So there are six scenarios where I can get... An, an, an apple or an orange and a pear. So I have to add these two together. And how do I get the probability of this in the first place? I have to times this, uh, these together. So, um, yeah. It wouldn't... Um, it's not like that you have this many probabilities in your exam, but you have to know at least if there's two events. So like, apple, orange, or orange, apple. But if it says here, and then, that means you have to have a specific timeline. Then you don't have to do that because... You need to pick an apple first before you can pick an orange. Okay, mathematical expectation. Mathematical expectation is the hardest part of probability. Um, funnily enough, I actually learned something related to it um, in during a camp that I just joined. But I put it into a uh, into another video because I completely messed, I completely butchered that section up. So I'm going to do it again. Um, now, what is mathematical expectation? It is the expected times an event occurs. So, like, let's say um, the apple and orange scenario again. Um, if I have a 2 over 5 chance to pick an apple and then replace it, and then do it 30 more times, then I would have um, how many apples? I would, I would probably have 12 apples because I have a 2 over 5 chance of getting that apple. Um, and I pick it 30 times. So out of those 30 apples, I will have 30 times 2 over 5, which is um, 12. So um, what is this 2 over 5? 2 over 5 is the probability of getting an apple. And then 30 is the number of times I'm going to try and get that apple. So um, this implies that um, in, thir in, uh, in 30 times I, I try to pick an apple, I will only succeed 2 over 5 of the time. If I were to succeed 2 over 5 of the time, I will get 12 apples. It doesn't need to re be replaced unless value is small. This is the, um, the part that might be a bit confusing. But I'm just going to shorten it up to uh, one thing. Which is, we're not talking about the probability uh, uh, of, a, of a dependent value. We're talking about the expected value, the expected time uh, amount of times we'll get that event. Not the probability of getting that event. We're talking about the expected times of getting that event. So we don't really need to care if it's... Um, if it's uh, re replaced or not replaced, if you're talking about um, uh, the expected amount of times they're trying to get it. Um, because that is because uh, we're assuming that um, uh, every five apples, we will get every five apples, we get two, ap uh, every five fruits that we pick up, we get two apples. So um, we're assuming that um, after five tries, we have a 100% chance of getting two apples. So like, um, since there are twenty over twenty, uh, this there are ten over twenty five. Ten over twenty five, and then if we um minus two over five. So uh, no minus two over five. Since we lose two apples, and you assume that we um uh, we we lose two apples every five times we pick something, we will get an eight out of twenty chance. It's 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 still um. Uh, it's still a uh, two over five chance of getting it, of getting an apple. So uh, yeah, we're ex we're expecting that um uh that the probability of it 
it will change. The like probability of getting an apple will, will change, but it will go up and then it will go down and it will go up again and it, it will go down and down and down and up again. It really depends on if you pick an apple or not, if it's if it's not replaced. So um, yeah, we in when we're talking about expected value, we assume that that doesn't matter. We assume that um, uh, we'll have a constant pattern of of it. So um, every so in every thirty app uh, in every thirty tries, we should get twelve apples. But uh, in this case, we say we, we replace it because remember, we have only 25 fruits. So if I were to pick up 30 apple, uh, uh, thirty times, I will only have 12 apple, uh, I will only have uh, 10 apples. Why? Because there are only 25 fruits. How would I get, um, how would I get uh, um, more than 10 apples if I only have 10 apples in there? That's why I'm mentioning that I should be replacing the apple again. But in those big values, which goes to up to the hundreds and thousands, we don't have to care about that. We just we just use the formula, the probability times the number uh, of trials. For example, uh, they want to choose forty two random people. Then it's forty two times the probability of getting that type of person. So, um, expected number of random variable x is the um, is the expected value that uh, we will get. Uh, from uh, picking up that thing uh, once. Think of it as like an average. So, um, think of it as like an average. So, let's say um, I have a 20% chance of getting one. I have a 30% chance of getting two. Uh, a value of two. Uh, this, must, this must be a value, okay? The main part here is that it must be a value. That um, It has to be a value. Not a, an item. It has to be a value. So, if uh, one chance of getting... 20% chance of getting 1, 30% chance of getting 2, and 50% chance of getting 3. So, um, so sometimes you will get 1, but sometimes um, in your first try you will get 1, maybe after that you get 2, maybe you get 3 after that, maybe then 3 again, and then 2 again, and then 1 again. You do not know, um, so many people will get different values, but what is the expected value that we will get? Um, this expected value is basically, I guess you can say, it, it acts like an average. Like the average uh, value that, um, like uh, in, you pick up in a certain amount of tries. What is the average value that you should be getting? So, uh, for example, let's say, uh, okay, uh, let's try and calculate this uh, value first before I go more into that. So the formula of calculating that is e x expected value of a variable x equals to sigma um, sigma xp or k sigma xipi where i equals to 1 and i goes up to k so what is x for this p p is obviously probability but x is the value of that event remember that i'm i keep saying it it has to be a value it has to be a value that goes up or down we so um yeah and p is the probability of that happening so um, this p x equals x i um, the probability of, of getting X is XI because we're talking about getting um, uh, that event right. So P X equals XI is the probability of your result being that event. And remember that when we're talking about probability, um, we want to make sure that the sum of all probabilities are equal to 1 because um, uh, the probability of, uh, of all scenarios happening cannot be more than 1 or it cannot be less than 0. So, in this example, you, um, the probability distribution of a random variable x is given by the table below. Determine the expected value of x. So, um, so x i p i. This is x i. This is p i. So, um, sigma means sum all at all. So x i p i means x i. Uh, x times p, but only on the certain values. So if you see, it's x1 here is p1. So x1, p1, x2, p2, x3, p3. x2, p2, x3, p3, and so on. So, sigma xipi means uh, the sum of these multiplied together, added, yeah, added sum. So, uh, 1 times 0 0.2 plus 2, point 0 point 2 times 0 0.4 plus 3 times 0 0.1 plus 4 times 0 0.3. The expected value will be 2.5. So um, 
So what that means is, if you were to do this multiple times and uh, multiple, multiple, multiple times, more like a lot of times that you're gonna do it, um, you expect that um, on average, you will get two point five points. That but uh we're not talking but then ev uh, we're not talking about an actual average here we're talking about the expected value because um, um. Uh, this average is using probability, so it's basically this expected value is an average for probability. So um, if you do if you do it multiple times, like I'm gonna do it for here, so uh, my expected value will be zero point two plus two times zero point three, which is zero point six, and two times zero point three, which is zero point six plus 3 times 0 0.5, which is 1.5. So my expected value here will be 2.3. That means if I were to do this many, many, many times, I should get uh, 2.3 on average every, every time I do it. So yeah, again, that's all for it. One more th uh, again, I'm gonna emph emphasize it one more time. If I were to do this a lot, a lot of times, I will on average get 2.3. So that is the expected value per turn. It can be a decimal because we're only talking about the expected value here.